Hello everyone, this is Mark Hammonds from Mobile Tuts Plus, and today I'm going to be teaching you a very quick iOS SDK tip that will allow you to debug your own applications more efficiently using global breakpoints. Now this tip isn't exactly novel or groundbreaking, it's been covered by Brad Larson and others in the past, however, I find that it is often overlooked, especially by beginning iOS SDK developers. So in order to demonstrate this to you, what I've done is I've opened an application of my own, it's available on Code Canyon actually, and I've inserted a bug into the code. So I'm going to show you the process of, de of debugging this code both with and without the global breakpoint. So we'll start by running the application in debug mode, and I'll launch the music player. And when I select another song, you'll see that the application crashes. So if you don't have this particular global breakpoint set, uh, anytime an exception is thrown in your application, you're probably going to go to the console and try to figure out what happens. So you see that in the console we have actually a very viable message that tells us this is an issue with our index, our array ind indices. But it doesn't tell us exactly where the error is occurring, and even worse, now that we know there is an error, we're going to have to run the application again to try and figure out exactly what's happening and maybe insert our own breakpoints manually. So that's one way to do it, and it's the way that I did it for a long time, and I'm sure many others have as well. But there is a better way, and that's by using this global breakpoint for your project. So if you go to Run, Show, Breakpoints, you'll see that you can actually set either project-wide or global breakpoints. Now a project breakpoint will apply to anything that you're doing when you're running your application in debug mode for this particular project, but a global breakpoint is going to apply to all the projects that you have in Xcode. So my recommendation is that you actually set this as a global breakpoint as it's something that's so useful you probably want to use it all the time uh, across different project domains. So all you have to do is double click the symbol and you'll want to type in Objective C or OBC exception throw. Then you'll want to specify that this function is in lib Objective C dot A dot DY lib. Okay, so what this is going to do for you is anytime your application is about to throw an exception, it's going to insert a breakpoint into your code. And that will allow you to use all the tools of the debugger as soon as it, an error occurs in your application during development, rather than realizing an error has occurred, rerunning the application after looking at the console and trying to duplicate that error on your own, either by mainly inserting breakpoints or using NS log statements or something like that. So essentially, if, done, if this is used correctly, it can save you a lot of time in the development process. Now you may be wondering what the benefits of the debugger are, and I will be covering that next week in a tutorial in our iPhone developer beginning series specifically on debugging with Xcode. So be sure to check back next week if that's something that interests you. Alright, so let's demonstrate how this will actually work. We're going to minimize our, win our debugger window there and we'll run the application again. And the only caveat here is uh, you do need to be in debug mode in order for this to work correctly. So come back to the music player. And select that last song one more time. And again we have an exception that's been thrown. Only this, this time, if you look at the bottom left of Xcode, you'll see here GDB stopped at breakpoint 1, Objective C exception throw. So if we come to the debugger now, and we go to the section in our track or in our, in our code that's listed here, you'll see it's actually pointing out the line of code where this exception occurred. And we can use all the tools of the debugger in order to figure out exactly what's happening here in our application. Now this is this may uh, in some ways seem trivial because if you look here what I've done is I've just added one to the indices which creates uh, an array out of bounds error when you select the last item in the list. 
uh, which I said may seem a bit trivial. Um, and you know, maybe you could quickly have gotten that from the, the console log or what, whatnot. However, what may also happen in your application is there may be errors that occur only under certain conditions and they can be very hard to duplicate. Uh, it may only happen one out of every 50 application runs or something like that. So you know, having this set up from the beginning can be extremely helpful in those situations. And even in situations like the one I just demonstrated, I think it's still more helpful than um, just trying to, to deduce what happened by looking at the console log. But certainly when the debug is actually very hard to track down, it can be a real time saver for you. Okay, so that's going to be it for this quick tip. As I mentioned, if this kind of um, performance tuning, you might say, development performance tuning or uh, workflow hacking is appealing to you, then be sure to check back next week when our beginning iOS series will cover uh, debugging with Xcode. So thanks for watching and see you next time.